you want to fly long range on amazing mountains, then the first thing you have to do is go find those mountains. Our story begins four and a half hours into a 10 hour drive. We've driven 440 kilometers so far, almost halfway there. We decided to start our trip on a Tuesday, thinking that would probably give us the best chance possible of getting the exact campsite that we wanted. We're nine hours into the trip now, we've got one hour left to go. I uh, just need to lower the tire pressure so we can get a more comfortable ride on the uh, gravel road. All right, an hour of gravel road to go and then uh, I'll probably do another shot when we uh, pull into the campsite. It's free. But yay, there's no one here. Yay. Well, we, uh, we got here last night, managed to uh, get our uh, managed to get our tent set up over there uh, in the dark and at least get uh, get a good night's sleep. Now we're uh, yeah just had some coffee and a little bit of breakfast and got a shade tent set up. So we're gonna go scout out a few other spots and uh, make sure that we got access to them and that the roads clear and we can get through. So I'll get more into that as we're uh, as I'm going along the road trying to find the spot that I was uh, hoping to be able to fly. Uh, so we just uh, pulled over to the side of the road here for a few minutes so we could uh, take a look around and check out some of these mountains. That one over there is pretty amazing. I'd love to do that big tall one way in the back. I'd have to practically be in the road to be able to fly it to get a line of sight. I'll have to see maybe somewhere else I get a different line of sight but that we'll see maybe when we come back uh, another time. <laughs> Definitely not today. Let's keep adventuring. Yeah more adventuring. Just taking another uh Having another stop here on the side of the road to uh, look at this view. I guess you can't see the view there now. Uh, <laughs> to look at this view. This uh, spot here, unfortunately, I think the waterfall's gone. I really should have tried to flow in it. Uh, I really should have tried to fly this spot when I was here before, but we I only spotted this at the end of our trip and I didn't have time to do it. But uh, we're gonna go further along and onto a different road where we get a better perspective. But in this big bowl here, there was a big waterfall coming down and uh, it just looked like a, an amazing flight with, you know, as much, as far as you could fly, you could keep making it more epic. I see a tiny bit of water, so maybe there's hope. Yeah. See that road up there? Yeah. I don't know if you can see it on the GoPro, but you can see on that hillside, there's a clear cut there and there's a road that goes through the middle of it. That's the road I want to go to to get the line of sight into that bowl. See how there's this ridge on a on the right hand side that kind of cuts in front of it. There's a ridge on the right hand side here that yeah. cuts in front of this bowl. And uh, I'm thinking that if I can get up on that road up there, it's about a hundred meters higher than I am. And further over that way, it probably gets a beautiful line of sight up into that bowl and also to that way off ridge right in the back there that we can just barely see. That's the problem with, with spots like that. Like you just have to go and see them in person, even when you're trying to look at it on satellite. We might end up having just a big tall row of trees in front of us, uh, blocking the view because they often leave trees at the side of the road to help maintain the, the road structure. Good news. There's still plenty of water in the waterfall I wanted to fly. So now I'd, if uh, this makes sense, I was talking about a bowl earlier with a ridge blocking the view. That ridge on the right hand side of the waterfall is the one that was blocking the view and that waterfall is what was inside that bowl. So that's the middle of the bowl there now. So that's, we're gonna try to get the same view but now half a kilometer closer and a hundred meters higher up. If this spot I'm guessing about works. But that's, oh, that's good news. Lots of water on it still. All right, so it worked. And now we're up on that road that I was pointing at. Uh, I don't know if you can see where we were down below, but we were somewhere on that road down below. I think maybe over there on that corner. So now you can see we got the pretty wide open view of that waterfall. Unfortunately, these trees still are blocking the view of the bottom of it, but that's still pretty good. We don't get as much of a view of the bowl inside as I was hoping though. You can see if to get to the top of the waterfall, there's like a, a dip down for a bowl or something there that we can't really see into. So I'd have to fly over that. 
but I think in my, my chair right here, so I get this kind of uh, perspective for my line of sight. But now that we've scouted the spot, I'm going to, uh, we're going to come back here probably either tomorrow or tomorrow's Thursday. We're either going to come back here Thursday or Saturday and uh, try this earlier on in the day before it gets too hot. We're going to go dip back along the logging road here, back to the main logging road and go further up the valley. The last time when we were here earlier in the year, there was a snow. Uh, there was an avalanche that had gone down and covered part of the road and it wasn't safe to go past. So it's going to definitely be melted by now. So this time we're going to go all the way to the end of the road because I'm uh, pretty sure there's some epic views there too. Uh, very often when we go driving down these logging roads, we end up, uh, well, we just try to go as far as we can and see what we can find for them to, to fly and to look at. And this time, this is the, uh, see, we're, we're hoping to get back up here, up this road here and go and check out that mountain back up there. But uh, the bridge here doesn't seem to be probably, I'm, I'm sure I could rearrange some boards and make it safe enough to get across, but, uh, I think we're not going to do that. We're going to go back down the valley a bit and uh, well, I'll show you uh, the other spot we're thinking about flying from. Uh, sandwiches on the mountain roadside, and oh. Oh no, my sandwich is falling apart. There we go. We saved it. Okay. My favorite right. thing is always sandwich cheers. 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 <laughs> sandwiches with a view. Mm -hmm. There. All right, so it's, uh, was it Thursday now? Yeah, it's Thursday now. And we've uh, come back to the spot here that we, uh, this one that we scouted out yesterday. And I'm gonna do, yeah, I'm gonna try and do like two or three, maybe four flights here and see if I can practice and, uh, you know, get better at it and find a nicer route and stuff like that. So we just have a couple more things to do and then I'm gonna do the first flight. I think for my warm up first one, I'm just gonna go to the waterfall, maybe that cliff right beside it. All right, I'm just gonna finish setting up here. All right, so I'm just gonna do my uh, warm up flight. I'm gonna go out to this waterfall here and just do the waterfall and maybe the cliff beside it, not going too far. I eventually wanna to try to get to the mountain in the back, but uh, yeah, it's my warm up for now. Just do the waterfalls, get a feel for what the wind is like out there. And uh, I guess I should pop the camera out here. I'm using my, uh, so it's a bit further of a flight once I start going to the water or the mountain in the back. So I'm using my Rad Lion with the uh, all the T motor parts and uh, stack and motors 
F90 motors. And I'm going to be using a uh, 6S2P lithium ion with uh, 18650 cells. All right, here we go. According to DVR. Well, so I'm starting where we're, uh, where we're parked or sitting here at the home point. We're at 1668 meters elevation. <laughs> okay, here we go. DVR is recording, everything's good. Yeah, here we go. All right, so it's my first time uh, flying at this spot. Uh, I think I'm gonna just uh, kind of beeline for the the triangle in front of the, that triangle ridge on the front right there. You can see the wind's taking me down valley a bit. I'm gonna have to actually go, go to the left a little to get back. So yeah, sorry, I started saying this before, but this is my first flight here. So I'm just getting used to, uh, getting used to the, the wind and learn the area a little bit and uh, try to figure out a route with like, you know, hitting interesting points. Like, do I want to come up here and fly along this ridge a little bit? Maybe that'll make it more interesting because I can fly in a bit closer here. Sort of make my entrance more interesting. On my right ear, babe. I can't use my hands right now. And then now I got to make sure I gain some elevation here because there's a bit of a head, a dead spot or hidden spot in there. And now I know that. Uh, Checking your home arrow. I can see. Oh yeah, no, I wasn't, but there we just did, and it was working. So I know I can see not all of this part, or no, we can see quite a bit of this, can't we? There was a little bit that was sort of covered by the trees, I think, but. I think we can see like, well, if I lose video, I got to dodge left and up this way. So I'm going to just be ready for that. All right, let's turn around here now. I'm still got video. Yeah. Okay. Let's see how low I can get in on the waterfall to start. Now, if I start losing video, it shouldn't be too bad because it's just going to be treetops in front of me. It shouldn't be like a cliff just erasing it totally. So I think I can actually get in lower than I am now, but let's start with trying this part. Yeah, some of those trees are higher than others. Yeah, the trees in here. Yeah, I, I, I'm... I think I'm going to actually not go like right skimming the surface for this one. I'm just going to uh, kind of fly above it a little more. All right, my battery is 3.6. I've used a thousand milliamp hours. Your head's good. All right, let's get a little closer in for this part's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, this is really cool. So this this is where line of sight ends for the water. Yeah, so I have to gain elevation real quick here. All right, so let's just keep checking and sort of see what the back looks like because that's fairly easy to check out here. There's more waterfall stuff in there. You can see there's a, a huge valley and stuff to uh, get past to get to that mountain in the background. I don't know. I might try for that with my next battery, but I've only gone for yeah, four kilometers so far. OK, well, I'm not going to go all the way in there. We've just kind of scouted it. So that is going to kind of that is going to be a little bit intimidating for me because there's just such a huge area to fly over that you can't see it all. Yeah. Yes, so now I've just turned around. I'm kind of flying over top of the river. I'm still at 3.55 and 1500 milliamp hours. So I think I'm good to keep going following here. 
Where's the actual big waterfall? Is that it there? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I could have. Uh... Where is it? I'm turning yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah, that's it here. Oh, my video is snowy. Remember, we don't have line of sight for some of this water. Yeah. It's just for the trees. Yeah. I can yeah, hear you. I can hear it. 2.4547. I'm only at 2000 milliamp hours, but this is my old pack, so that it sort of worry me a little bit. I'm not 100% sure how many milliamp hours I can get out of it. And I'm also a little bit curious about the wind, fighting the wind on the way back, because I think it was blowing me there. So uh, let's keep track of that, babe. It's like 2100 milliamp hours, and I'm turning back, or 2000, we'll say. Okay. From higher up the waterfall, and let's see how many milliamp hours it takes to get home here now. All right, well, at least I'm kind of comfortable with the waterfall now. That was sort of the main point of this flight was to just fly for a bit, get used to it. So I wasn't like doing a, you know, trying to go for an epic long flight first try. I can see him. Good. All right, so I think that, that flight went well. I'm just gonna change up batteries now and uh, swap GoPro batteries to charge and uh, go for another one now. I think we're set. Uh, I just got to start my DVR recording. All right, here we go. Have a good flight. <laughs> fly up this ridge of trees right in front of me here and then up to the, the cliff on it and then down to the waterfall from there. That'll be, uh, hopefully make the beginning of the flight here interesting. And then what was your uh, turnaround point again for this? Uh, so I should turn around at I wrote down 3.35 and 2,400 milliamp hours. Yeah, 3.35 for the battery and mm -hmm. yeah, about 2,400 milliamp hours. I think I can go further than that or longer, but I want to just, uh, I'm going to do another battery after this one. So this one's going to be the, uh, you know, feeling it out, making sure it feels like it's all good and going to work. Plus the wind keeps picking up, so you want to make, give enough to get home. Yeah, I need to leave slack for the wind because I'm. Uh, it could possibly pick up and get uh, get quite strong. All right, three point eight battery. 3.8 battery. Just and, uh, almost 800 milliamp hours. So the top of this section of falls is 850 milliamp hours. Oh, because it was less than that to get back. Yeah, I think there was more wind to fight on the way out. Now this is that rock that I can see f that comes up behind the waterfall. All right, so now I'm at this valley. I'm going to go a little extra high here because I'm, uh, I mean, it'll be a lot easier on the way back to double check. Actually, you know, let's, uh, let's just turn around and see what my line of sight's looking like on that hill. Oh yeah, so see, I got, this hill is what will block it and it's, it's way below where we are up there, so. Yep. I'm probably much higher than I need to be. 1200 milliamp hours. The wind's carrying me to the right though a bit and I don't want to get uh, pulled behind that cliff. So let's just check again because I'm a little bit getting kind of anxious here. That looks good. Okay, I'm going to stay to the, stay a little more to the left. 
kind of surprised there's not a lake in that big bottom part. Mm -hmm. It's a gravel lake. There's another waterfall way down below. All right, so now I'm going to try and keep this shot like coming in on this this part just uh, pointed like nice and straight. So if I want to, I can uh, speed up the footage and post and it won't be like zigzagging left and right. So I'm just going to try to be as straight and steady as I can flying towards this this ridge section. So I'm only 14, 1500 milliamp hours in. Well, it's a glacier. That's why it was gray, gray, colory looking. It's glacier oh, okay. ice. So the big top flat spot of that glacier, I don't really get good line of sight on. No. But this, this is definitely that thing I was talking about flying, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And there's that other point. So, so I'm good if I fly up, up this uh, slope of ridge on the left. You can yep. See that's glacier running down there underneath us. Oh, my video, my head's just got to look the right way. There we go. My milliamp hour count, I'm at 1800. I think I might be able to do this. I think I'm going to be able to go, oh no, maybe that's not glacier ice. That's just like sloped smooth stone or something. How's my head for left, right? It's good. Oh, my video is getting snowy. Mine's fine. Oh, my video is snowy now. Uh, I think I had to look up more. Okay. Yeah, up more. All right, so I'm not like cruising this ridge like a pro, but I'm a little bit, a little sketched out still here. My first time up here. Well, you're still scouting the ridge. Looks, looks good. This is the part to dive. So I'm going to dive this. Hopefully my video stays good. Keep my head looking up. Your head looks good. All right, I'm a little disoriented. Okay, now I can see the ridges and the way left, the way back and everything, okay. All right, I'm good. Now this way on the way back, I can see that ridge line and the road in the distance. So I can tell if it's gonna get cut off. So I can get down way lower here now or more comfortably. So you're at 2300 and you said you turned back at 2400. Yeah, I'm already coming back. The video is a little snowy, but I'm, it seems like it's good enough. Yeah, I can feel the wind trying to blow me to my the, to the quads left now. So it looks like I've got pretty good line of sight to get down lower. I'm going to try and get some uh, perspective on this earlier waterfall parts. And if I do lose video, I just got to pop up because it'll just be those trees in front of the ridge here getting in my way. But they look like they're actually pretty, I'm pretty good. Oh, does the river go through a tunnel there? No, no. Oh, I thought that was a tunnel. <laughs> Here's that rock that we can see in the distance. Yep. All right, you're at 2700, 3.46. Your amplifier is pretty good. Nice. My video is snowy. All right, let's do another shot of this. I'm only at 3.45 and 3000 milliamp hours. I should be good. I'm going to come in on this uh, waterfall now again. Oh, the wind's blowing me the other direction this way. <laughs> All right, try to get repositioned and start the shot here. Oh, oh, the wind's really... My video. The wind's really a challenge there. Yeah, I'm getting behind the rocks there. 
All right, so that part is not that easy to get. I was just getting, you know, learning if I can get in that part and I can't get down as low as I thought, so. Fair. Oh, I really wish the GoPro could capture this, the water sound. Whoa, look at that one splashing out. That would, whoa, you gotta be careful that doesn't hit you. Oh, uh, should maybe fly out this way with that water below. And the wind, yeah, the wind kind of pushes me a little more on the way back. Because I'm doing 70, over 70k at 10 amps. So it is actually a little bit more of a fight on the way out there. But I mean, yeah, the wind does, has been shifting a bit here and there too, so. All right, so I'm at uh, 4,400 and 3.1, so. Yeah, I could probably hit 5,000, I'm pretty sure. Maybe, maybe a touch less. But what did I, I went up to the very top and I turned around at uh, 23, 2,400. It didn't take as nearly as much as we thought to get up there. You turned around at 2,300. Yeah, okay. So I could probably turn around at 26 and still be okay. <laughs> now I gotta change my props. Landing malfunction. <laughs> well, I'll have to change props then just to be on the safe side. All right, that was flight number two. That was a little bit scary. So I'm gonna try one more of those really quick here now. And uh, I think this next one's gonna be the good one. Cause now I'm, yeah, I'm getting more and more comfortable and all right, let's just change props and batteries and uh, hit that one more time. Okay, so I'm gonna do my third flight up there now with the, uh, can use the Rad Lion again. Now my third one, I'm gonna do that all again. And I've kind of learned the route I wanna take and hopefully this will be the good, like, hopefully this will be the good final take for the shot. We're all set for the uh, third flight now. All right, here we go. Flight. flight three.
right, that was my third flight out there with the Rad Lion. First one up to the waterfall and check it out. Second one I went to the peak and now this third one I went to the peak and even did like a couple turnbacks and retries on some dives. I really feel like I need a fourth flight, but we just don't have time and I'm pretty sure I can splice together something pretty good between the second and third. I just might not be able to get the full like non-stop sort of story flight thing going that I was hoping for. It'll have to be uh it'll have to be an edit with like uh, a flight edit with cuts and stuff in it. But uh oh I can't complain, that's some pretty amazing footage. I'm I'm super happy to uh have been able to do that flight. Well that was good. I'm uh, I'm happy with that flight. I mean there's a couple things I wish I could have done better. Some of the some of the approaching waterfall and stuff there. Some of the lines I took could have been a little better, but I don't think we've really got time for a fourth flight today because we're, uh, we're a little bit worried about my truck. It might break down. I know it's making some weird noises. It's probably fine, but it's making us worry. So we're going to go back to the campsite and pack up and head over to a motel and see if we can figure out what's up with the truck and then hopefully come back out here uh, tomorrow for a couple more days. My clutch is making weird grindy noises even when it's in gear engaged and like under power and I'm like going up a bit of a hill in second or third gear there's full power like the clutch isn't half out or anything but it still makes these weird clutch grindy noises when I push the clutch in the noise goes away let it out and then it's like it never happened but uh it's happening pretty often now so it's there's there's something broken and wrong there We're going to just pack everything up because we have no idea what's going to happen. I don't, I doubt I'm going to be able to get an appointment to get my truck fixed in the next two days, unless they're super dead for some reason at the auto place. And uh, I guess it depends what it is. I definitely don't want to buy another new clutch for this old vehicle. We have to abandon our camping trip, but we're glad that you came along for this part. Thank you. Yeah, we've only had uh, two days. There was supposed to be another day now relaxing and then another two days back here doing more flying. But uh, we'll have to see. Maybe if we have amazing luck, we'll uh, you'll see some more videos of us back at this uh, awesome campsite here with this amazing view. But uh, if we don't have great luck, then I guess my next video will just be uh, us figuring out how to get home without my truck with, <laughs> with a ton of gear. A truckload of gear and us and no truck and figuring out how to go home. Keeping the RPM low seemed to help avoid the noise. So between a combination of going 30 kilometers per hour in fifth or sixth gear and coasting down all the hills with the clutch in, the 50 kilometer drive back to town was successful. Still a long way from home, we had some thinking to do. But with the closest city hundreds of kilometers away and every auto shop we could find book solid, Things weren't looking good. For the next two days, we spent 10 hours a day talking on the phone with roadside assistants and trying to figure out what to do. We finally came up with an idea. It wasn't really a good one, but it felt more promising than all the other ideas that we didn't have. We were going to rent a U-Haul truck with an auto trailer. That's the good part of the idea. The not so good part is that the only auto trailer available on short notice was 300 kilometers away in the wrong direction. The roadside assistance operator was particularly kind that day and assured me that they would cover 100% of the towing bill. So the truck was loaded up and we headed off in the wrong direction. It was a long and incredibly difficult journey, mostly because of the goats. Finally arrived at the U-Haul location later that day. The next morning, we loaded my truck onto the auto transport and began the trip home. So the uh, truck issues I was talking about turned out to be uh, as bad as I was worried. And uh, the situation has now changed. And we've at least figured out how to get home. And uh, this, is, this is how we're doing it. There's no auto shops that can check out my transmission for like a week and a half. And yeah, at least we figured it out how to get home. A couple of days ago, we were, we were wondering if we're just gonna have to ditch my truck and like fly home or something. That night, we stayed at the hotel U-Haul. The next morning, I was feeling a little upset about the obvious lack of amenities, but after finding out how reasonable the rates were, I quickly got over it. 
Besides, I had some ripping to do. This was an FPV road trip after all. Plug this. That was a bit of a rough landing. My battery dropped way faster than I was thinking it would. But uh, oh, that was a good, good little warm-up test plate. <laughs>